inventory is finally here in zero. Beautiful accounting. We're just going to come over here to accounts and we're going to go to inventory. So far, nothing looks any different. Of course, they give you the announcement. But let's go to create a new item. And we're going to call this, let's see, what do I want to sell today? Uh, let's sell airplanes. I can't spell. Airplane. There we go. Item name. Airplane. Of course, if you were being serious about this, your item code might actually be some sort of a numeric thing like a manufacturer's part number or something like that. But notice here, this is kind of what's new. It says I tracked this item. This is all still there. And I want you to pay attention here to where this where it says purchases account. Watch what happens when I check off I tracked this item. It's so cool. It's like magic. Check it off. Oh my god, it says cost of goods sold account now for when I purchase the item. And when I sell the item, of course, nothing really changes there. So we have the asset account, inventory asset. You'll probably want to leave that alone for the most part, unless you have a specific reason for feeling that you're so special that you need like separate and multiple inventory accounts. Usually that creates more mess than, than it helps with anything. Uh, so I purchased this item where, let's say uh, airplanes are gonna cost us $100,000 probably really cost a lot more than that. Cost of goods sold account is going to just be cost of goods sold. Probably a good idea to use that in most cases. Now cost of goods sold, I will give you that there are definitely cases where you want to have different cost of goods sold account. For example, if this is like a, 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 a part of a manufacturing process, there's any number of different reasons why you might want to have different cost of goods sold account for things. But the inventory asset account usually is just going to be inventory asset. And then the sales account. So let's go to uh, sales. There we go. I like that. Nice and original. And we're going to uh, buy the plane for $100,000. we are going to sell it for $500,000. Fantastic. Save. I've now got my airplane item ready to go. So let's go, let's go buy an airplane. This is so much fun. I love buying airplanes. So let's record uh, a check. Okay, we're going to spend money out of the checking account. <laughs> and we're going to buy the airplane. I'm going to kind of skip over everything else because I'm so excited about this. So we're going to just buy one airplane. You know what? I'm feeling lucky today. Let's let's buy two airplanes. It's going to cost us $200,000. Who are we buying it from? We'll create a new one called Airplane Manufacturer. New contact. Uh, the date is going to be today. And that's that. So we got an expense for $200,000. Let's save it. And away we go. And what I'm getting at is now I want to run a balance sheet. I want to see $200,000 of inventory on my balance sheet. It's so exciting. There it is. $200,000. So now let's sell one and see what happens. Let's go sell one. So I want to sell an airplane. I want to see, I want to sell one airplane. I want to see the sales of $500,000. I want to see the cost of goods sold come out of inventory. So inventory is going to be $100,000 and cost of goods sold is going to be $100,000, right? This is what we expect to see. And, you know, I hope that as an accounting or bookkeeping professional, you're able to kind of think those things through out loud the same way that I just did. So we're going to record an invoice. And we're going to sell it to airplane buyer. And we're going to sell it today, same day we bought it. It's due today. Item, airplane. Everything comes in. I've got one. I've got $500,000. It's going to sales. Everything's beautiful, and we're going to just uh, approve it. Invoice approved. So now let's go run my income statement. <laughs> so my sales notice are very high here. I'm assuming this includes my 500000 from the sale of my airplane. Yes, it does. There's that. Let's back up. And it includes my 100,000 cost of goods sold. Right, there it is from the sale of my airplane. Now let's go run the balance sheet. Make sure the balance sheet works. And there's my inventory now valued at $100,000. Let's click in there. This is so exciting. So there it is. I sold or, or I bought $200,000 worth of inventory and I just sold $100,000. So there it is coming out and going into cost of goods sold, of course. That, my friends, is inventory in a nutshell in zero. If you haven't already checked it out, do check it out because now you can do it. You can keep track of it. 
simple, simple inventory, right? I can, I can buy, I can keep track of my quantities, I can sell and I can still keep t track of my quantities. If your inventory tracking needs go beyond what this does, then of course you're gonna wanna go check out the zero add-ons and get into the ecosystem and use a more robust inventory tracking project and have it sync back into zero so that you can get 100% of a solution. This is the future of accounting, my friends. We need a 100% solution, which means we have a core GL product that does what we need it to at the core, and then we start taking advantage of the ecosystem when our needs go beyond what the core GL package does so that we can get 100% of a solution instead of trying to force some other application into what winds up amounting to maybe 85% of a solution, maybe less. That, my friends, is inventory in zero in a nutshell. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. I hope you get into it. I hope you try it. And I hope you ask me any questions or give me any feedback that you have based on what you've seen here. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, post your comments below, or check the description if you're on YouTube. You'll have a link over to the blog post and you can post your comments there as well. As always, I hope you learned something and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.